thrilling moment in all of our lives. I am standing here as the single representative of all the radio networks to cover the most exciting news event of all time. Alien. And news reports from Earth are brought to you here on the Savita Wave Band, broadcasting around the galaxy, around the clock. And we'll be saying a big hello to all intelligent life forms everywhere. Uh, there'll be, likely there'll be people who aren't scared of making any sound. And so there could be people who are like visual artists or musicians who've jammed with amateurs or people like that. Uh, anybody can order from the Bell Business Office a special magic box. It has to do with um, a project that we did in the past, um, which is one of the music uh, pieces that uh, we're known to do, which is a uh, known something as a freeform jam. 21st March, 1987, in Kitchener, Waterloo. Club Alien is coming. Expand conceptual limits. Promote collective improvisation. Challenge divisive mindsets. Experience Club Alien at the Start Gallery in Kitchener and on CKMS-FM 94.5. Club Alien is coming. 21st March, 1987. Club Alien, you are invited. Club Alien, don't miss it. An event, Club Alien, CKMS, the Start Gallery, Club Alien, Club Alien, Club Alien, Club Alien, Club Alien, And we're in the studio today with uh, Lisa Vespi and Peter Sepp, who are uh, actively involved in coordinating Club Alien, which is a part of the uh, Arts and Technology Week. Is that the correct term for it, That's Lisa? That's right, yeah. And uh, perhaps you could tell us uh, how you came to be together with Peter and how Club Alien came to be a part of Arts and Technology Week before we get into what it's really all about. Okay. Um, as as president of the Fine Arts Student Guild, I wanted to uh, do something for the students that would be that would be different. We have speakers come in who are usually working in traditional media, and I I wanted to uh, do uh, an educational sort of thing. And um, I met Peter about two years ago and became interested at that point in what he was doing in telecommunications art. And uh, Club Alien is a is is something that has come out of out of that interest. Mm -hmm. I invited Peter to come and uh, do a workshop with us. Mm -hmm. And the, the type of thing that Club Alien is or will be or may be is uh, certainly quite different from anything else that's taking place during the week. Mm -hmm. um, most of the things I think seem to be centered on um, computers and synthesizers and the things that people might normally think of uh, in this day and age when you put together an arts and technology week. Uh, right, and yeah. Club Alien is quite different. Now, Peter, you've done um, similar types of events for a number of years. When was the, the, the first type of thing that you've, you've put together? How long have you been doing this? Since 78, uh, did a 
series of 14 weekly uh, sound sessions at the National Gallery of Canada called Sounds and Wednesdays, Le Mercredi Sonor Sonoras. And, um, um, but this, I think, what interests me is, is bringing, uh, you know, giving a setting where all the people can participate. Mm -hmm. That's kind of a key thing. So this, this has been a constant in, in the different That's uh, right. events that you've put on. Um, but they've all sort of been different in not only in settings but in some of the aspects of them in regards to um, I guess the the uh, applications or things like that yeah so if you like taking the idea of uh, that every all of us can participate at some level and uh, uh, or may have an interest in and then providing a, uh, a chance to do it then pushing that idea then obviously we could do a global event and we, if we use telecommunication, and if we think of the Marshall McLuhan kind of idea of a global village, we could do a village festival. And so it's, that's one side of the idea. And then you push the idea a little further, and um, building on the work of Carl Sagan, um, who's, and other scientists who are looking for extraterrestrial signals, mm -hmm. we can say, all right, um, we can get involved in that if we like to. Mm -hmm. now, it's, I find it kind of interesting that... Um, the crux of the event is a collective sound improvisation with musicians and non-musicians and any number of, of uh, noises or musical notes which may come from uh, standard instruments, may come from you know, pieces of wood or what have you. In, in that aspect, it's, it's almost anti-technology. Um, you're asking people to, to, in some senses, get very primitive with the sounds they may make. And I find it interesting that you're integrating the use of technology in the attempt to um, to give this sound out to uh, other galaxies, but yet the actual sound itself may be it may be a primitive one um, compared to what people <laughs> come to expect these days with the slick slick sounds and recordings. Um, is that something that you that you wanted to get to get those two things together? Or is yeah. it sort of happened that way? No, I, I guess. I, I sort of really believe that all, every human being has a genetic code, a musical code built in us, and it's to provide a setting where we can explore that code. And um, I guess our forefathers, millions of years ago, have been making primitive sounds. And then technology has always been used. So uh, now that we have slick technology, but in the past we had tom toms and mm -hmm. fire and wheel and those things. So technology comes along, so we, as, just as you say, we integrate those, there's, as a matter of fact, we'll be making a documentation, an audio documentation, a mm -hmm. digital, uh, sort of high technology thing. Mm -hmm. The fact that it's being broadcast uh, is high technology. But um, I guess the basic principle is that it's all technologies are fair game, mm -hmm. we can use them. Mm -hmm. And I guess, to my mind too, that much of what may take place musically um, will be much like a free jazz format, um, whereby you may not have um, the most technically proficient musicians and players, um, but in free jazz, if, if a person is capable of making a sound that moves an audience or, you know, or feels right to people uh, at the event at the time, then it's just as valid as any music that someone may make who is a serious musician. Right, and it's like Cage or uh, Stockhaus and these guys too, musique concrète. And um, one of the things that uh, really is, is magical about it is uh, in, that, in this kind of a setting, uh, there is no wrong sound. Mm -hmm. And uh, so what it does, it really, um, to me, um, sounds very genuine, authentic, like there's no, um, there's, uh, there's no artifice. Mm -hmm. There's no. It's guileless music. There's not not an awful lot preconceived about what's going to happen. There's a there's a structure that's been established or being mm -hmm. established, but what happens within the structure is is up to the people who are who are there. Yeah, that brings um, it. That brings an excitement to actually. None of us know what it's actually going. What kind of what kind of sound and music will actually come out of the actual event? Mm -hmm. And much of it is is keyed on on listening. Uh, I don't want to say listening skills, but just the ability to listen. Um, people will be listening to what's happening at the Start Gallery as well as participating. People will be listening uh, over the uh, FM airwaves on CKMS to what's happening here and at, at Start Gallery. And the people who are making the noise and the music in each uh, location 
uh, will have to be listening to each other in order to you know participate to the to the best of their capabilities. Now that might be uh, that's actually a bit of a skill, a bit of a social skill that mm -hmm. we're learning as we're doing it because um, sometimes uh, there's a tremendous wall of noise that develops when it first. Mm -hmm. We first get going, uh, and then we start to listen and, and mm -hmm. leave silences because some, sometimes it might be a, um, after many years somebody may want to play a real half half mm -hmm. hour solo mm -hmm. very loud. And that sort of brings it back to the essence I would think of of not only what Club Alien is about but perhaps what the whole week is about, and that's communication, um, utilizing whatever tools you know we have at our at our disposal, and the listening ability will then you know help that communication take place. On the communication note, also, I, I think it's worthwhile checking in something which can communicate across languages and cultural differences. There's lots of divisions within a university, within a society, within um, countries and cultures. Uh, what I'm interested in is something that crosses the, those cultural differences mm -hmm. on a gut level. Mm -hmm. Something which is so human that uh, it's unavoidably, we can hear a true emotion, a true human emotion. And, blend in with it, if you like. Mm -hmm. Now, on Saturday the 21st, people who may be listening and, and are curious about if they can participate and how they can participate, um, you'll be having a meeting in the afternoon. Um, now, this is to uh, what talk about things with people. What's going to be happening at that meeting? It's at 2 o'clock at Start Gallery, uh, 125 King Street West, and um, We'll be showing some videotapes, some some past projects, telecommunication mm -hmm. projects, uh, and uh, we'll be discussing some of the possibilities of what we can do in the in the evening at eight o'clock. Mm -hmm. So, if people do want to find out what may be going on or or what they may be able to do, they should come down and and yeah, and experience right. this. And yeah, it sort of serves as a an introduction to the whole event, anyway. I guess. Mm -hmm. Now, at that time, will you, will you be um, discussing or establishing uh, which um, instruments may be, you know, no, the no. Um, just as far as encouraging people <coughs> to um, pick some stuff up before 8 o'clock to mm -hmm. uh, bring to the gallery, we'll be talking, one of the areas we'll be talking from, a, from an academic sort of point of view is also what are some of the precedents of, in terms of um, art history or um, for this type of work too. Mm -hmm. So people may not only have a chance to uh, participate and, and have some fun, but it should be a learning experience mm -hmm. for most people anyway, if, they, if they're so inclined. I want to get back to you for a moment, Lisa. Was there any um, special problems posed by, by organizing Club Alien as one of the major events for the whole Arts and Technology Week? Mm -hmm. I, I suppose the, the biggest problem is, is in, in publicizing the event. Um, trying to pigeonhole it. I mean, it's not something that's that's prepackaged and mm -hmm. that somebody can really get their head around in terms of precedence in, in art history or music or mm -hmm. um, um, uh, the fact that non-musicians are, are invited wholeheartedly to participate is something that people have a hard time dealing with. Like, mm -hmm. I can't play or an some instrument. Pe some people can have a hard time dealing yeah, with that. Yeah. Yes. And, and, you know, I can't play an instrument. What can, What is my um, contribution? And and a good word that Peter uses is gut level. Mm -hmm. And that goes back to the, to the spontaneous and, and the uh, and, and trying to revive the origins of music. Mm -hmm. And uh, other other than that, um, uh, it's it's been um, uh, fairly, you know, easy going. It, it's, it's a lot of work in order to uh, coordinate, you know, things going on with the Creative Arts Board, mm -hmm. the Start Gallery, here at CKMS, mm -hmm. the Fine Arts Department. Did you have any uh, resistance from the other members of the Arts Board in terms of having this kind of event take place, or were they behind it right from the start? They were pretty much behind it. Um, they, were, they were very interested in, in the fact that it was something new that they hadn't heard of before. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so when I proposed it, they, they were quite uh, cooperative. Right Once you were able to try and give an explanation as to mm -hmm. what might be happening mm -hmm. that Yeah, day. I find it really difficult, but uh, that's, that's a skill that, that you, you, you have to develop.
mm -hmm. in talking about it and and looking at the historical precedents and and in that way that that gives it some sort of credibility mm -hmm. you know when you can when you can cite well this you know this one happened happened in 1920 when mm -hmm. who was it Peter uh, Gastev and Mayakovsky mm -hmm. two Russian constructivist poets um, did uh, huge events uh, where they used factory whistles. Uh, steamboats, planes, um, machine guns uh, <laughs> aimed in the air, I would think, mm -hmm. and uh, <laughs> choirs, clowns, uh, dancers, improv improvisers, and um, the whole town was invited to participate. So this this kind of event is not something that's just uh, sprung up in the in the 70s and 80s. There's a historical precedent for oh, it, yeah. and uh, it reflects the times because I'm sure in the 20s the fact that they were using you know the industrial whistles and, and the guns and whatnot as you say was a reflection of uh, the world around mm -hmm. them socially and politically and, and a fascination with technology as well mm -hmm. at the time like in, in, in the futurists they glorified back in the um, 1910s 20s and the Italian futurists just gloried in the fact of the new technology and the, and the beauty of a steam engine you mm -hmm. know and that's always been a fascination. Mm -hmm. And I guess uh, there's a, at least a possibility, perhaps a likelihood, that in, in this particular case that we'll have uh, uh, digital technology employed to provide certain sounds and whatnot that may, that may happen, which may, again, be a reflection of, of the times around us. Now, this is the first time this is something like this has ever happened in Kitchener, though, correct? I to believe our, to so. To our collective knowledge? Mm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So it is, a, it is a, a historic event in that case. Well, yes. actually, this is the first time a live um, recording, I mean, a live uh, recording session is beamed out into space on, on purpose um, anywhere in the world. So this mm -hmm. is a world first. It's a world premiere. And if one was to uh, sort of project it into the future, it could indeed be the birth of a new art form uh, that maybe 10, 20 years ago could be just like uh, folk art or a popular art form and mm -hmm. some high art and but going back into history too um, something that is similar to is the carnivals where there's professional musicians and uh, amateurs get involved in making sounds in the streets in Rio or, um, or the gamelan music where the whole village has been improvising old improvisational themes using the gamelan um, and you get born into the village band, and when you die, you leave the band. Mm -hmm. So it's got the historical, and it's got the future questions. So in a way, it's a, on Saturday the 21st, we can check out what some of the future directions might be. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess we, uh, what we can say to people is that uh, Arts and Technology Week is going to be uh, a rather unique week, full of uh, all kinds of interesting events, and that uh, Club Alien will be the culmination of that, and it will be a, an historic first uh, in Kitchener Waterloo and it should be something to be uh, enjoyed and experienced by everyone hopefully they'll be uh, lined up out in the street and uh, stick a microphone out the window and get them singing out <laughs> in the street or something I want to thank you Peter for coming in and uh, we'll see you on the 21st and you as well Lisa for uh, organizing and bringing uh, Peter's event to Kitchener Waterloo thanks very much Doc. Thank you, Doc.